can you just start by introducing yourselves, just your name and your institution where you're based? Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a marine ecosystem services researcher at Plymouth Marine Laboratory. Hi, I'm Jacob Bentley. I'm a senior fishery specialist and ecosystem modeler at Natural England. Great. Could you tell me about the project you've proposed? And I'm interested in where it started from. This is quite an exciting project because it's building on, on work that's already been done. So in the North Sea, there's been work done on sand, sand eels and their importance within the food chain and to other ecosystem services. And in the Celtic Seas, we don't know yet. So during this project, you'll be looking at lots of different aspects of forage fish and sand eels in the Celtic Sea, their importance to whales, their importance to seabirds, their importance to commercial fish, what kind of cultural values. So we're also going to look at how climate change and future impacts such as plastic pollution may impact on those services. DEFRA, so the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, have a marine natural capital ecosystem assessment programme. Uh, and natural capital is this approach about understanding the value uh, of nature and incorporating this value into decisions we make about economy and society. So it's just drilling down using ecosystem modelling, literature review and natural capital accounts to understand how important sand eels are for the ecosystem, all the way from links to commercial fish, to seals, to seabirds uh, and to marine mammals, and trying to feed that into a more holistic ecosystem based approach form of management for forage fish, which are incredibly important for the whole functioning of the ecosystem. Ben Chiotti is the second supervisor. He works at the University of Plymouth um, and he will be supervising the part of the PhD where you will use DNA metabarcoding to look at the diet of commercial fish species. From this, we can, we can gauge the importance of sand eels and other forage fish within their diets. Another academic supervisor will be Professor Nicola Braymont. She's based at Plymouth Marine Laboratory with myself. She has a vast amount of experience in environmental economics, um, natural capital approach. Joanne Bayes is a senior specialist in Natural England and she is an expert in marine natural, natural capital. So she sits in DEFRA's Marine Natural Capital Ecosystem Assessment Programme and she carried out the natural capital accounts for sand eels in the North Sea, which has fed through to advice for DEFRA. During the first year, it will be establishing a baseline on what all the cultural ecosystem services are that are provided by sand eel. So looking at how important they are in the Celtic seas for the diet of whales, collating all the information and then starting to look at how things like uh, the impacts of climate change and plastic pollution could impact on those ecosystem services. As part of this PhD, the student will be able to come to London and spend time uh, working with me and others and learn about how to use EcoPath with Ecosim, which is the most widely used food web modelling tool uh, globally. It's used to look at the impacts of marine protected areas on food webs, different management scenarios, climate change, uh, moving into looking at the impacts of plastic pollution. Is it an indoor and an outdoor research project? It's going to be quite a lot of desk work. Um, a lot of the ecosystem services, the research is literature review. There will be a lot of lab work with the DNA mess barcoding with um, Ben at the University of Plymouth. And there may be some options for going out on vessels to collect the samples of commercial species. The objectives of this PhD align with a lot of work going on at the moment for ICES, which is the International Council for the Exploration of the Seas. Uh, and ICES is an intergovern intergovernmental science organisation that provides advice for meeting conservation, management and sustainability goals. So there will be lots of opportunities to travel, uh, meet international groups and contribute to actual policy advice. What kind of a candidate should apply? It's quite a varied skill set, to be honest. So the kind of candidate we'd be looking for is someone who's keen, is really interested at looking at fisheries from a management perspective but also someone who has those kind of skill sets that would be able to work in a laboratory. So this PhD is incredibly interdisciplinary in terms of the methods that are used to do the research, but also in terms of where the studentship sits right on the interface between policy and research. So the student will have the opportunity to get embedded in the research community and see what it's like to live as an academic, but also work closely with policy uh, to, to, to get involved with more governmental advisors and see how the transition from research uh, to policy to, to policy advice works ideally 
we would be looking for a candidate who had some type of laboratory experience just to give us a grounding in that side of it, um, the, the more technical aspects. Anyone that's interested in this project, just feel free to get in touch with Sam or I. We're happy to answer any questions about the PhD or about ICs, about Natural England or about Plymouth Marine Laboratory and the University of Plymouth.